Welcome to Confident Chemistry. Today I'm talking about formal charges on organic molecules. Feel free to take your own notes or go to my website at confidentchemistry.com where you can download the PDF of today's notes template. In the last video, we talked about drawing organic molecules with skeletal structures or bond line drawings just like these ones here. In some of these drawings, you'll see little positive or negative charges beside an atom. It means that that specific atom in the molecule has what we call a formal charge. Having a formal charge means that the atom has either fewer or more valence electrons than it does when it's neutral. If we take a look at the molecule on the left, the minus symbol indicates that the oxygen atom has a form formal charge of minus one. It has an extra valence electron compared to a neutral oxygen atom. The central molecule, we don't see any charges indicated so all of the atoms in this molecule have a formal charge of zero. If we take a look at the hydrocarbon on the right, the plus symbol indicates that the central carbon atom has a formal charge of plus one. It must have one fewer valence electron than a neutral carbon atom. Being able to calculate a formal charge quickly is an essential skill in organic chemistry. But before we get into exactly how to do it, Let's just refresh our memories about what the expected number of valence electrons are for some of the most common atoms that we'll see. As you're taking your organic chemistry course, you're probably going to see a lot of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and halogen atoms. We use an X here to represent the whole group of halogens when they behave similarly. You might remember from your introductory chemistry courses that neutral carbon atoms have four valence electrons, nitrogen has five, oxygen has six, and halogen, halogens, sorry, have seven. I'm gonna write those numbers up above the atoms again here, just so that we can have a reference to remember. So neutral carbon atoms have four valence electrons, neutral nitrogen's five, neutral oxygen six, and neutral halogens seven. These are the numbers that we're gonna be comparing to when we calculate a formal charge. If you forget these numbers, if you don't have them memorized, just check out your periodic table for reference. Depending on how old the periodic table is that you're looking at, you'll see carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine belonging to groups 14, 15, 16, and 17, or group 4a, 5a, 6a, and 7a. Either way, this is a quick hack to find those neutral valence electron numbers if you need them in a pinch. Once you know the number of valence electrons for a neutral atom, you can go on and determine its formal charge. Let's take a look at those same three molecules from the first section of the notes and pretend that we didn't already know their formal charges. We can calculate a formal charge for an atom using the formula here at the top of the box. Formal charge equals the number of neutral valence electrons minus the number of bonds and the number of electrons in lone pairs. We'll take a look at the first molecule and focus on the oxygen atom. First, we know that a neutral oxygen atom has six valence electrons. In this molecule, we can see that the oxygen has one covalent bond, so we count one electron from that bond. We can also count six lone pair electrons. So six electrons neutral minus seven electrons in this molecule equals negative one. We've shown that this atom has a formal charge of minus one. On the second molecule, let's focus on the nitrogen atom. We can use this formula visually by drawing a circle around the atom that we're interested in and counting the electrons from bonds and lone pairs inside the circle. Inside the circle I've drawn, there are three bonds and two electrons from lone pairs, so a total of five electrons. We know that a neutral nitrogen atom has five electrons. And we counted the actual number of electrons in the circle as five electrons as well. So we've shown that this nitrogen has no formal charge or a formal charge of zero. Let's use the circle method again for the central carbon atom in the last molecule. We draw a circle around it and see that there are three bonds inside the circle and no lone pairs, so just three electrons there. A neutral carbon atom has four valence electrons and in the circle we only counted three. Four minus three is one, and so we've shown that this atom has a formal charge of positive one. The thing is, when you're studying organic chemistry, you end up seeing the same atoms and the same formal charges over and over and over again. 
In my opinion, the best way to find a formal charge on an atom is to just become so familiar with the really common ones that you just know them as soon as you see them. I call this method familiarization. You're not memorizing, you're just becoming so familiar with these atoms in their different formal charge states that they become like second nature. They're like your friends. You don't memorize facts about your friends, right? You're familiar with them. You know why they do what they do because you're familiar with their quirks. And that's really the way that we wanna be with molecules. So here's a handy chart that you can use to become familiar with the most common atoms in their neutral, their negative one, and their positive one formal charge states. We're gonna start with the carbon atom here. So on the left, we've got a neutral carbon atom. In the middle, we have a negatively formal charged carbon atom. And on the right, we've got a positively formal charged carbon. So all carbon atoms that are neutral have four bonds and they have no lone pairs. And I'm sure you know that already. That's something that we kind of have ingrained by now. All negatively charged carbon atoms have three bonds and have one lone pair and all positively charged carbon atoms have three bonds and no lone pairs. So they have an empty p orbital there. And I've drawn all single bonds here, but this could go for any combination of bonds on the carbon atom. So for example, a carbon atom that has a negative formal charge could have a triple bond and a lone pair and still be a negative one formal charge. All right, moving on to nitrogen here. So on the left, we've got neutral nitrogen, in the middle, negative one nitrogen, and on the right, positive one nitrogen. So all nitrogen atoms that have three bonds and one lone pair are neutral. All nitrogen atoms that have two bonds and two lone pairs are negatively charged. And all nitrogen atoms that have four bonds and no lone pairs are positively charged. And again, that can go for any combination of double, single, or triple bonds. I've just drawn them all single for simplicity's sake here. Moving on to oxygen. On the left here, we've got a neutral oxygen atom. In the middle, we've got a negatively charged oxygen. And on the right, again, a positively charged oxygen atom. So oxygen atoms that have two bonds and two lone pairs are the ones that are neutral. So we're used to seeing that, like water. Oxygen atoms that have one bond and three lone pairs around them are our negatively charged oxygen atoms. We'll see a lot of those in organic chemistry. And then oxygen atoms that have three bonds and one lone pair are positively charged. All right, lastly, we've got our halogens. So X, it could be fluorine, bromine, chlorine, or iodine. I'm using bromine here as the example. And again, we've got our neutral, our negatively charged, and our positively charged atoms. So bromine atoms that have one bond and then have three lone pairs around them are the neutral ones. Bromine or any halogen atom with no bonds and four lone pairs around them are the anions, are negatively charged. And then bromine atoms with two bonds and two lone pairs are positively charged. That might look like a funny molecule, but you're going to see a lot of those small ring compounds later on in your organic chemistry course. And they're, they have pretty cool reactivity. Time to do a few practice problems. In the first one, we're gonna be looking for missing formal charges. Okay, so first we're gonna look at the molecule on the left, and we're gonna look closely at the oxygen atom. That's the one that we suspect might have a formal charge. So we'll draw a circle around it, and we'll go through the whole formula just for one more round of practice with that method. So if we take a look at this oxygen atom, first we need to recall the neutral number of valence electrons for an oxygen atom, and that's six electrons. Then we can see that this oxygen atom has three bonds, so we count one electron per bond, so that's three electrons, and then there are two more electrons that come from the lone pair, so there's a total of five electrons around this oxygen atom. So six for a neutral minus five for what we see is one, so that means that this oxygen atom has a formal charge of plus one. Moving on to the middle molecule here, we've got a molecule with a carbon-carbon triple bond. 
And I'm going to draw that end carbon atom in so we can see it and draw a circle around it so that we can count the number of electrons in the circle. And we're going to compare what we see inside the circle to the neutral number of electrons for a carbon atom, which we know is four. So I'm just going to write down neutral is four. And the actual number of electrons in the circle is one, two, three, four, five, three bonds and two from the lone pair. So five electrons around that carbon atom. And so four minus five is negative one. So that means that this carbon on the end of the triple bond here is negatively charged. All right, let's take a look at the nitrogen atom in the molecule on the right. Again, we're gonna draw a circle around it so we can count the electrons around it. And we're gonna compare that number to what's normal for a neutral nitrogen atom, which is five electrons. So in the circle, we see one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. And if we take five minus six, we get negative one. So this nitrogen atom in the molecule on the right is also a negatively charged atom. In this next practice problem, we're gonna be looking for missing lone pairs instead of charges. So this problem really relies on that familiarization that we talked about earlier. And it's super important because on your exams or quizzes or homework, they don't always draw in all the lone pairs and you need to be able to anticipate when there are ones missing that you might need to draw in. So here on the left, we've got a molecule with a negatively charged oxygen. So a negative one oxygen we know has one bond and it always has three lone pairs. So I'm gonna draw out the little structure from our familiarization chart there. Remember a negative one oxygen, one bond, three lone pairs. So that means that this structure is missing three lone pairs around it. We'll just draw them in like that. So for the middle molecule, we're gonna look at the nitrogen and we see that there are no charges indicated. So that means this is a neutral, zero negative charge nitrogen. And we know from familiarization that a neutral nitrogen has three bonds and one lone pair. So we can see, um, we'll draw in our little three bonds, one lone pair, and the structure above has three bonds, so two in the ring, one to the hydrogen, and it was just missing one lone pair. So we'll draw that in there. The next molecule has a chlorine atom, and again, we see that there are no charges, so it's a zero formal charge halogen. We know from familiarization that those have one bond and three lone pairs. So just like from our chart, one bond, three lone pairs, neutral halogen. So that means that this chlorine atom needs three lone pairs to complete the drawing. Thanks for studying with me today, everyone. I really hope that this video was helpful and made you a bit more confident about finding formal charges on organic molecules. If it was a big help, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more of these types of videos. Happy studying.